on the shoulders of the giants. Our two chief justices have honorably retired, and we celebrate you, the chief registrar of the judiciary, as you perform your last functions today for your dedicated service to the judiciary. We are putting in place a system of ensuring that there is dignified exit of everybody who serve Kenyans in the judiciary. And we hope the rest of the government will follow suit because days are gone when people serve and then they are chased away as if they are dirty dogs. That is history. We celebrate everybody who has served this judiciary because the work that we are lining on today as the footprints of even those who retired many, many years ago, what they dreamt, what they kept on doing in the precedence of the cases that we keep on applying and repeating, and we celebrate them every day. Thank you, all of you, for the support you have given us. And I thank each one of you for joining the judiciary today for this very historic event, a day when we not only take stock of our journey, but also chart a very decisive way forward in our unwavering pursuit of promoting access to justice across our beloved country. Our vision is to create a people-centered justice system, a system that truly understands and serves the justice needs, capabilities, and aspirations of our people. And this vision is informed by the mission over the last two years, which has been focused on expanding, enhancing, and improving access to justice. We are all of us, not only the judiciary, but all the state actors and our people, court users, committees, and stakeholders, transforming the landscape of justice in Kenya, making it more inclusive and efficient. We are committed to ensuring that no one, especially the 20 million who have been excluded from formal justice system, is left behind. When we were developing these documents, we wanted to say we will meet the justice needs of all Kenyans. And some of us kept on reminding us we are not God. We cannot meet all the needs. So we are also inviting God in our midst to help us meet the needs, the justice needs of all our people. In effect, today marks the beginning of a new transformative trajectory for the judiciary, one where the spirit of service becomes the defining feature of our institution as we work to improve our people's justice journeys. Going forward, as judges, judicial officers, and judiciary staff, we are committed to put the people at the center, to put their justice needs at their center, and to respond to their aspirations and their expectations. All the decisions that we make must address their needs. Therefore, as we unveil the judiciary's 2022-2023 State of the Judiciary and Administration of Justice Report and the judiciary's 10-year strategic blueprint, Social Transformation Through Access to Justice, 2023 to 2033, we are entering a new era. And I'm happy you have joined us to enter this era together, a era where justice is a right for all, not a privilege for a chosen few. In presenting the State of the Judiciary and Administration Report 2022-2023, we are reaffirming our commitment to transparency and accountability. 
This report narrates our journey, highlighting both our achievements and challenges in the last financial year. In the financial year 2022-2023, our courts saw cases filed 423,394 new cases were filed. Ladies and gentlemen, 419, 262 of them were resolved, which means 99% case clearance rate. You need to appreciate the judiciary for that. This rate of case clearance marks a 5% improvement from the previous year. Additionally, the judiciary reduced its case backlog, case pending for a year, by 18% from 336, 119 to 276, 678 cases. That is something also to acknowledge, especially for the judges who are present here, because they work their fingers to the bone trying to meet the deadlines and the reduce backlog. I am internally so grateful to the judges, judicial officers, our tribunals, our magistrates, our cabbies for your hand work. Thank you very much. The judiciary implemented initiatives to expand access to justice, notably enhancing court and next mediation. We have Your Excellency, our chief guests, the, the chief cabinet secretary, the 17 new mediation registries, leading to a significant increase in mediation cases. A total of 4,708 matters were referred to mediation, almost doubling the previous year count of 2,445. Of these, 4,450 cases were successfully settled. The average settlement rate for quarter next mediation was an impressive 95 percent, highlighting its effectiveness as an avenue for dispute resolution. I really thank the committee that has read the court and next mediation, read by the Honorable Mr. Justice Ochieng. I don't know whether he is present in this congregation, but we thank everybody who has supported that effort. Additionally, our efforts in mainstreaming alternative justice system have also been fruitful. We developed and launched NJS County action plans in counties like Kajiando and Nakuru. We also established NJS Ukumbi suites in Isioro, Kajiando, Nakuru, Peketoni, thereby enhancing the ability of the people to resolve their own disputes independently. And in this regard, I wish to recognize in a very, very special way the committee read by the Honorable Professor Joel Goge and the Honors I see here for this great work. We recognize you in a very, very uh, special way uh, for this ingenious innovation whereby we innovated how we can deliver justice in our own way. The judiciary has significantly advanced its use of technology to improve access to justice. This includes the introduction of e-filing in six additional counties beyond Nairobi, digitizing court records, and expanding virtual courts for better efficiency, effectiveness, and accessibility. Moving on, we expect to have all court stations nationwide onboarded to e-filing by the close of the quarter of 2024 up to the current 11 counties. Furthermore, through another innovation, the Mahakama Purport Initiative, we are leveraging virtual courts to boost our efficiency and reach. Under this program, judicial officers from less busy courts 
handle cases from BCA courts using virtual platforms. This approach has not only helped in reducing case backlog at the BC stations, but has also helped in achieving a more balanced distribution of work across the judiciary. This is also an internally developed innovation of how we can deal with backlog, and I'm very, very grateful to our judges and judicial officers. The judiciary has made significant progress in specialized justice areas, particularly concerning children rights and sexual and gender-based violence. We developed and implemented the child justice strategy and the SGBV strategy. The implementation of these strategies aim to make our courtrooms more sensitive and accommodating to the needs of the vulnerable groups. Aligning our vision of offering dignified and trauma-informed care to abuse victims, we have established SGBV courts in 12 SGBV hotspot locations around the county. And in this, we are asking the counties to use all means to discourage violence against one another. And if they don't, their counties will be spotlighted as a hotspot. When I meet the governors and I send our governor here to his colleagues to tell their counties, please, not to be counted as a hotspot. So far, we are dealing with Nairobi as a crisis, and we are working very closely with everybody because it is the responsibility of all of us to discourage and to eliminate violence within our homes, within our communities. These courts are dedicated to addressing the specific challenges and means associated with SGBV cases. Our work resonates with the theme of the global 16 days of activism against gender-based violence that starts tomorrow. I therefore take this opportunity to urge all of us to speak out and join hands to root out GVB from our communities. In the last financial year, we have made significant progress in extending the geographical reach and proximity to court services. New courts were operationalized, specialized divisions established, and construction completed for our Hembu Law Court, Port Victoria Law Courts, a notable increase in accessibility was achieved through the operationalization of 57 mobile courts all over the country, mainly in the hard and semi arid areas, thereby enhancing physical access to justice. The Supreme Court expanded its reach by establishing sub-registries in Mombasa and Kisumu, allowing litigants to file cases locally instead of traveling to Nairobi. The Court of Appeal opened new stations in Nakuru and Heondolet. The High Court established the Capsavet station and sub-registries in Lamu and Iten. The Employment and Labor Relations Court upgraded sub-registries in Kakamega, Bugoma, and Marindi to full stations and added sub-registries in Kisi and Nyamira. It also established three divisions in Nairobi. Claims and Labor Relations Division, Judicial Review Division, and Labor Rights and Appeals Division. On the other hand, the Environment and Land Court established the Voice Station and operationalized sub-registries in Lamu and Cabernet, plus two divisions in Mirimani. Additionally, the Magistracy within the ELC activated six new courts. Uh, no, this is the magistracy, generally, which activated six new courts in Tindaret, Okarao, in Keno, 
Rumuruti, Kabiet, and Mandiani. The Mero Small Claims Court was also established, increasing the number of the Small Claims Court to 13. The judiciary made progress in integrating tribunals from the executive, adding three more tribunals. The Rand Adjudication Tribunal, the Financial Center Tribunal, and the Water Tribunal, bringing the total number of tribunals now under the judiciary to 24. Additionally, the cabinet approved the tribunal's bill, which is intended to standardize tribunal administration. And the deputy speaker is here. We send you to urge the National Assembly to expedite the enactment. In living up to the judiciary's role as a promoter of social harmony, the courts and the political parties dispute tribunal played a pivotal role in the resolution of both pre-election and post-election uh, disputes during the 2022 electoral cycle. Another good practice to spread to other countries is that in Kenya, we were able to deal with all the electoral disputes, all the petitions within the six months that is provided for in the law, and we require to be celebrated for that. And for the peaceful resolution of electoral disputes, which was executed with efficiency and fairness, becomes the hallmark of our judicial system. Our chief guests, ladies and gentlemen, the judiciary's performance is closely linked to the commitment and skills of its workforce including judges, judicial officers, and staff. To in address the increasing workloads, the judiciary, in collaboration with the Judicial Service Commission, has focused on improving human capital management and organizational development for more efficiency and speedy justice delivery. In this regard, several initiatives have been implemented to develop and optimize human resources and create a better work environment. In the financial year 2022-2023, the judiciary announced its human resource capacity by appointing 32 judges to various courts, recruiting 396 judicial staff, and promoting 145 judicial officers and 108 uh, staff members. We need to acknowledge the work of the Judicial Service Commission. Thank you very much. The judiciary plans to continue recruiting and training our staff, our judges, to ensure the effective operation of the judicial system. By the end of the last financial year, our staffing levels reached 64% of the optimal level. We have a long way to reach 100%. But we recognize this is a notable improvement from the 56% level at the end of the previous year. Maintaining transparency and accountability in the judiciary is a primary focus that we all work towards, our North Star. Working closely with the Judicial Service Commission, the judiciary has actively addressed complaints and allegations of misconduct as part of the commitment to what we call in the judiciary, judicial hygiene and institutional integrity. In the reporting period, the judiciary received 1,212 complaints, primarily concerning slow services, lost courts, files, delayed judgments. Of these, 881 were successfully resolved, while 331 have been carried forward for resolution in the current year. They are still active. The Judicial Service Commission processed 77 petitions filed against judges and judicial officers during this period. This included 43 new petitions and 75 which we had carried forward from the previous year 
totaling to 118 petitions. Out of the nine disciplinary cases against judicial officers, seven were concluded and two remained pending at the financial year. A significant achievement was the completion of a comprehensive audit which we asked the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to carry out in the judiciary. And that review and entailed the view of the court registry systems, EACC looked at our policies and procedures and management of government-funded construction pro projects within the judiciary. The EACC findings and recommendations from these audits have become an integral part of our strategy to eliminate corruption, enhance accountability, and build trust in our service delivery. Our courts and administrative units are implementing these recommendations in furtherance of our commitment to integrity and transparency. Ladies and gentlemen, the judiciary's budget allocation has grown from 18.12 billion in the last financial year 2021-2022 to 21.13 billion in the year 2022-2023, marking a 17% increase compared to 5.8 growth seen in the previous fiscal year. We thank His Excellency the President and the National Assembly for their support in enhancing the judiciary's operational capabilities. Despite this boost, the judiciary still faces a significant funding challenge with a consistent deficit of nearly 50% over the last three years. We will continue discussions with the government and the National Assembly on the need to address these financial shortfalls. Despite these constraints, we are committed to making the most of the available resources to ensure efficiency in the service delivery. This highlights from the 2022-2023 State of the Judiciary and Administration of Justice report exemplify our unwavering commitment to justice and service to the Kenyan people and all the people within our borders. It is in this context that we celebrate our achievements while recognizing the challenges that we face. We now look forward, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sturge blueprint. Also significant is that we are unveiling this blueprint. Through this blueprint, we are changing the face of justice in Kenya by embarking on a trajectory where our focus will, where our focus will be to transform the judiciary into a caring and service-oriented institution that not only dispenses justice, but also uplifts and empowers the people of Kenya by fostering peace and harmony in our communities. The speakers who spoke said that the blueprint addresses the long-standing justice gap in the Kenyan legal system, where only 10% of justice seekers find resolution of disputes or their grievances through the courts, and 71% through non-state mechanisms, leaving 19% without any legal redress. Beyond the traditional law of being an adjudicator of disputes, we in the judiciary have conceived the law, our law is to include being facilitators of dialogues, we are supposed to bridge the divides in our community by going upstream to prevent conflict. We are also promoters of social harmony by promoting reconciliation 
and the well-being of our people. We have also recognized our responsibility of being the connectors of the various justice champions working under the multiple doors for accessing justice in the community. In this way, we in the judiciary will be contributing to the creation of a more peaceful, just and harmonious society through proactive and inclusive justice practices. In our quest to improve the quality of justice journeys for our people, our courts will be accessible. Our judges, our judicial officers, members of the tribunals and staff are all service-oriented and care about the well-being and dignity of our court users. Our processes will be streamlined and simplified, not just for efficiency, but to ensure that justice is reachable and understandable to every citizen, regardless of their social or economic status. To strengthen the judiciary as an independent, accessible, and efficient institution that safeguards the rights of all, including the vulnerable and the marginalized groups, we are dedicated to enhancing access to the court services. This involves us overcoming the geographical barriers and making courts more accessible to our people. In response to the specific justice needs of the various vulnerable and marginalized groups, we plan to establish more specialized courts and fully, equipped, fully equip the existing ones. We've talked about the SGBV courts, we have talked about the courts for petty offenses, as our governor has mentioned, especially in Nairobi. We are also exploring a 24-hour duty courts. This will all ensure that justice will always be available, even in urgent situations like nighttime evictions or weekend arrests. Furthermore, the Starge Blueprint envies homes the judiciary as a connector of justice champions, leveraging the justice capabilities of our people. We aim to promote the multi-door approach to justice, empowering individuals to resolve disputes through various means, including mediation, traditional alternative justice system, the AJS, conciliation, arbitration, and other avenues. We are committed to accelerating the adoption and deployment of technology to improve efficiency and accessibility to justice. Our use of technology will be user-centric and rights-based to avoid digital exclusion. The integrated case management system will be enhanced to fully automate case management processes enabling services to be provided without physical registry access or court contact. Additionally, efforts will be made to ensure integration and interoperability of information system across the various justice agencies. We are also focused on advancing criminal, civil, and commercial justice reforms under the guidance of the National Council on the administration of justice, and I'm entirely, internally grateful to the council members who have worked very closely with the judiciary to see to it that this chain link remains constant. Thank you, the Honorable DPP, for being here today and for supporting the work of the NCAJ. A key objective of NCAJ is to reform the criminal and procedural laws which remain largely unchanged since colonial times. We aim to align them with the constitutions, human rights ethos, and to make them facilitative of delivery of justice in the contemporary world. In pursuit of the goal of having courts and tribunals of excellence, the judiciary will utilize data and evidence to improve our service effectiveness. This will involve strengthening performance management, enhancing docket management system, 
and scaling up data governance. The goal is to ensure timely and efficient justice delivery with no case taking more than three years in trial and more than one year on appeal. The judiciary, ladies and gentlemen, is committed to tackling environmental challenges, especially climate change, by incorporating green justice principles. This will involve embedding environmental sustainability into our operations, procedures, and decision-making process, including both administrative and judicial actions. The focus will also be on making court facilities more environmentally friendly, encouraging the wider justice system to embrace green justice in our planning and activities. To optimize performance and fulfill our mandate as the judiciary, we are committed to maintaining adequate human resources and focusing on attracting, developing, and retaining talent. This will involve enhancing staff competencies, creating their incentives, and promoting teamwork and inclusive leadership. Additionally, we are looking at strengthening and providing our psychosocial support to our staff to ensure a conducive workplace and equipping the workplace with the necessary tools to meet contemporary judicial demands and deliver people-centered justice. In response to this growing demand for judicial services, the judiciary will work towards securing the necessary financial resources for the optimal delivery of services and to advance our infrastructural development. When Your Excellency Prime Cabinet Secretary spoke about the judiciary being ahead in some areas and lagging behind in others, the areas we are lagging behind is infrastructure. Look at our Supreme Court and look at the imposing state of the art other constitutional structures like the Senate or the counties. So we'll be looking out for support so that we can also enhance our infrastructure and build a Supreme Court where the governor is claiming to be a car park. <laughs> <laughs> to achieve this, we will focus on vigorous mobilization, effective utilization, and prudent management of resources. Furthermore, collaboration and coordination in delivering of services are not just constitutional imperatives, but also integral to our focus on putting the people at the center of our actions. We will actively engage and include the public in the administration of justice. We will work towards nurturing a culture of interagency, consultation, and collaboration, creating synergies among various institutions to expandite and enhance delivery of justice. We have all agreed justice belongs to all of us and it flows like a river. We will uphold and enforce the dictates of the Judicial Code of Conduct and Ethics, leaving no room for misconduct or corruption within the judiciary. Under the stage blueprint that we are launching today, we have committed to a zero tolerance policy towards corruption. We will work towards revamping our complaints mechanism to enhance their efficiency and transparency. Going forward, we judges, judicial officers, and staff commit to perform our duties with utmost dignity, integrity, and impartiality. Complaints will be dealt with firmly, swiftly, and transparently, but also fairly. I take this opportunity to call on all of us within the judiciary to recommit ourselves to these values of judicial service that include honesty, efficiency, and dedication, reinforcing our unwavering commitment 
to integrity and ethical conduct in our judicial responsibilities. In conclusion, our chief guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Stange Blueprint stands as a symbol of our shared vision for a judicial system that is ours, that responds to our needs. Yet, it is important to remember that a blueprint alone cannot enact change. It requires concerted action, collaboration and dedication from all the sectors. This is why we value the collaborative and partnership that we have enjoyed from very many of our partners. The corrective effort of judges, judicial officers, judicial staff, other branches of government, stakeholders in the justice sector, and every Kenyan remains crucial to turning the stage aspirations into a reality. I call upon all institutions and all Kenyans to join hands with the judiciary so that we can walk and work together to achieve our aspiration of a judicial system marked by accessibility and efficiency. My heartfelt thanks to all of you. My gratitude to the Sonja and the Stage Blueprint committees that worked tirelessly day and night. My gratitude to the Egg Institute for Innovation of Law for their technical expertise and everyone who contributed to the development of these pivotal documents. I recognize also the footprints of our sister, our mother, Lady Justice F.A.O. War, the mother of the judges, especially the women judges, for your contribution. I also recognize the former Chief Justice, the retired Nancy Barasa. Our footprints are found also in the stage because they were in JTF. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for coming to encourage us for those encouraging remarks. May God bless you to continue supporting the judiciary. Thank you very much. Honorable Chief Justice, may I request my lady to remain on stage? And may I request our protocol colleagues to help us remove the podium? so that we can run or we can manage the symbolic handover of the State of the Judiciary Administration of Justice Report. Allow me to welcome our chief guest, the Prime Cabinet Secretary on stage,